Hi guys, welcome to the third and final video in the series on the traits of civilization. Today we're going to be looking at uh, culture and how culture changed with the rise of civilization. Here are your goals. You've got three questions at the top and five key terms down there at the bottom. Well, let's, let's start at the beginning. Uh, before we can talk about cultural change, we've got to understand what we mean when we say culture. So culture can be defined as the collection of beliefs, behaviors, and norms that combine to give meaning to a society's shared existence. Uh, so basically this is all the stuff that people do in order to make their lives meaningful. But you know, once you, once you have a city and once you have enough food, then the next thing you start to wonder about is like, well, why are we doing all of this? Why are we here? Who are we? Uh, what's our shared identity? How should we live? So culture is basically a society's attempt to ask, answer those big questions. And uh, different sorts of cultural activities include stuff like art, architecture, and music, making beautiful stuff, um, different sets of beliefs, stuff like religion, philosophy, and science, and also different sorts of shared activities, stuff like rituals, holidays, and uh, family life. So before the rise of civilization, there was still culture. Col any, any group has a culture. And so the small uh, farming villages and hunter-gatherer groups that existed before the rise of big civilizations um, had certain ways of doing things. And what's interesting is most of these groups all around the world had pretty had some very uh, interesting similarities in terms of their culture. One interesting thing was that uh, religion all around the world before civilization seems to have been very similar. And so most groups that we have studied uh, fall into a type of religion called animism, which is the belief that all things uh, that exist in the physical world, all the stuff you can see, also exists in another world called the spirit world, or they called it different things, but essentially just a there's a spiritual world and a real world, and they, in, they connect with each other. And the big idea here was that human beings could communicate with the spirit world uh, by doing certain relig uh, religious rituals or prayers, and in exchange get good stuff from the spirits. So for example, if you killed a deer, you could pray to the spirit of that deer and say like, deer, I'm sorry, I killed you, I had to eat you, that sort of thing. And anybody could do this. Anybody could pray to the spirits and get good stuff. Um, another thing that all early civilizations shared was something called an oral tradition. and that this is where all of the knowledge that a group possesses is passed down from one generation to another through uh, spoken word. That's through stories and songs and myths. Um, and they had to do this because there was no writing back then. So you had to send all of your knowledge by word of mouth from one generation to the next. So all early uh, cultures before civilization have oral traditions to transmit all of their knowledge. Uh, there was art before civilization, but it was fairly limited. One reason is that there just wasn't a lot of extra time or resources for really big art projects. So you do get some sweet cave paintings, like you can see in the picture here. Uh, but really big art projects, big sculptures or buildings, had to wait until the rise of civilization. And one other thing is you get gender equality. Um, not perfect gender equality in all cases, but in most early societies before civilization, women had just about as much power as men. Everybody had to work to find food, and women were just as good, if not better, at finding food than men. Usually women would gather like berries and fruits and stuff, uh, whereas men would go out hunting, and a lot of times the women would come back with more food than the men would. Um, and because they were so important, women got to play important roles in deciding what the group would do. So there was a lot of equality before the rise of civilization. All of this changes with the rise of civilization. And so all of these changes come about because of changes in agriculture and social stratification and inequality, and it brings about major changes to religion, uh, to how we record knowledge, to what sort of art we produce, and how men and women relate to each other. 
First, let's look at religion. So, as states develop and as societies become less equal with the emergence of civilization, uh, certain elite groups, that is the most powerful people, uh, start to claim special religious powers and to create special organized rules about how you please the gods. Um, and so all different civilizations came up with different organized religions, but they all had a lot of similarities. And some of the similarities were that there were supernatural beings who could control everything that happened on Earth. So gods up in the sky or on mountains controlled what people did and what the rivers did and what the weather was and all of that. Uh, second, there was this belief that human beings could do stuff to keep the gods happy. That way the gods wouldn't destroy your city or whatever. Um, and you could keep the gods happy by doing certain special forms of worship. Not just any kind of worship, but special stuff like building temples or secret rituals or sacrifice, either of animals or plants or sometimes even people. Um, and last of all, and this one is maybe the most self-serving, but only the people on the top, priests and kings, were the ones who could really communicate with the gods and keep them happy. So this gave the people on the top of civilized societies special uh, responsibilities and special powers because they were the only ones who were supposed to be able to talk to the gods. Another important uh, change that happened is that civilizations learned how to write. And what this meant is you no longer had to pass down all of your knowledge through spoken word, but instead could record stuff and write it down for later generations to read. And writing tended, tended to develop because as cities got bigger and as more and more trade was happening, it was impossible to keep everything organized. You can't run a city if you don't know how many people there are, how much uh, how many resources you have, and so you need to write all that stuff down to keep track of it. And so before long, uh, all the different civilizations develop some system of writing or recording. Um, and it starts out just really simple, as you can see in this picture, it's just kind of like um, uh, some basic symbols and some numbers, but it eventually develops into a full-fledged symbolic way of representing words. And this had many advantages. Kings knew what was going on in their kingdom. Traders could keep track of all their deals and decide what was or was not a good deal and how much stuff they had, and all sorts of other advantages that we'll talk about in class. Civilization also comes with a big change in the way people do art. Instead of little, little tiny sculptures or little cave paintings, we see the emergence of what is known as monumental architecture, which is one of the major art forms of the ancient world. Um, and monumental architecture comes about because the people on top, the kings and priests, have a lot of power and have access to a lot of resources. And because they have so much power and so many resources, they can now undertake huge art projects. Um, think of the pyramids. Uh, and why would they do this? Why would they spend so much time and energy creating these massive works of art? Uh, well, basically, they would do it because they wanted to demonstrate uh, the power and the glory of their society or of their uh, religion or their gods, or sometimes just themselves. And one last big change that we see in all civilizations, and this one makes me kind of sad, is the rise of patriarchy. Um, and Patriarchy is a social system in which men hold most or all of the power. That is, women don't really have very much power. And people have speculated that this happened for a number of reasons. One of the main reasons, though, is we stopped moving around when we started farming. And what this meant is that now women no longer played an equal role to men. Men would go out and do most of the farming, and the women were now expected to basically stay near the house and have lots and lots of babies. Um, and the farmers could now feed all these babies. So basically, with the rise of agriculture, women stop being equals and start to be viewed by people as basically baby-making machines. Um, and so under the patriarchal system, which lasts for basically all of world history up until the very present, um, men will go out and work in public. They do all the ruling, all the fighting, and most of the paid work. 
whereas women are left in the private sphere, that is, in the home, and their jobs include stuff like giving birth, raising children, cooking, cleaning, and sewing, and stuff like that. And what I think is really interesting, and what we should talk about throughout this course, is why does patriarchy remain in place in most societies for nearly all of recorded history? Why is, why is patriarchy what emerges instead of matriarchy? Why don't women get to be in charge? Why aren't men treated as house slaves? I don't know. We should talk about it. So anyway, guys, that's the video for today. Um, you should be able to answer these questions and explain what these different terms mean. See you tomorrow.